Well, in most of the classic calculus books, you will find a more concise treatment of Riemann sums or estimates of a function. Um, and it requires that we have a function defined on AB being bounded. First, we create a regular grid like we did before. So we have a left hand point A and a right hand point B, and we subdivide the interval in equal pieces. And each of these intervals has a length delta x. And uh, a is supposed to be x0, and the first, the right endpoint of the first interval is called x1, etc., etc. And uh, b is the final element, which is xn, being the nth right endpoint of each of these intervals. Yeah, so uh, this grid is regular in the sense that delta x is fixed, all the intervals have equal length, uh, so which is given by delta x equals b minus a divided by n. Well, we know then f is a bounded function on each of these intervals. And what does it mean? Well, this set of function values is therefore non-empty and bounded. So in such case, we may look at both the infimum and the supremum of the function values on this interval, xi minus 1 and xi. Yeah, so we may define numbers yi. yi equals the infimum of the set of function values on xi minus 1, xi, and zi equals the supremum of all function values on this set x i minus 1 x i. And now that when f the function is continuous, then we know by the extreme value theorem that the infimum is actually a minimum and the supremum is a maximum. Now we define the lower estimate and the lower estimate is now formed by picking from each interval the infimum of the function values times the length of an interval, delta x. Yeah, so suppose here we have the graph of the function, then we have one, two, three, four intervals, and from each interval we pick the infimum, and in this case we have a continuous function, so these infimum, infima are minima. And then we just add up the rectangle so defined. So LNF is a lower estimate for the surface area, if you will. Yeah, something similar can be done if we pick instead of the infima on each of these assets, we pick the suprema. So un of f is the upper estimate, which is just summing over zi times delta x. Yeah, so here again we have a graph of the function, and now we pick, instead of taking the infimum, we pick the supremum. So by definition, each of the rectangles is now above the graph. Yeah, so we get an upper estimate for the surface, surface area enclosed by the graph. The nice thing about these lower and upper estimates is that you can prove that the limit for n to infinity of those exists. Yeah, so there is a limit of the lower estimates and there is a limit of the upper estimates. And the idea is basically that if we keep subdividing the intervals, if we bisect the intervals again and again, then we get an increasing bounded sequence. And L F2 to the power N is an increasing bounded sequence. 
and uh, the upper estimates go down. They, are, they lay above the function, but by bisecting each of those intervals, we see that these points decrease. So the idea is to focus on the lower estimates, where we subdivide the interval in 2 to the power n pieces. And this is an increasing bounded sequence, and u to the power n of f is a decreasing bounded sequence. Yet yeah, we've also seen that there's something like a monotonic convergence theorem for sequences. Yeah, an increasing, a monotonically uh, increasing bounded sequence has a limit, so, and a decreasing bounded sequence also has a limit. Yeah, so both limits exist, and uh, now the basic contribution is that we call f integrable if over a b if only those limits are the same, so that the lower x estimates are converging, we know that, but they converge to the same number as the upper estimates, yeah, which is called the number i, or the definite integral of f over a b. Yeah, so again, i is no different from the number a that we defined before, so i is now the number which you already gave a meaning to, so this is the integral of a, b, f, x, d, 